Welcome to 5 and 5 from One Stop Co-op Shop, where I discuss five key design decisions about a game in about five minutes. I'm Michael Kelly, and today I'm looking at Siege Storm from Awakened Realms. Quick disclaimers if you didn't already watch the playthrough. First of all, we were given a review copy of this game, and second of all, it's being distributed in the U.S. by Van Ryder Games, who published one of our designs, Salvation Road. But of course, I'm going to strive to be as unbiased as possible, so watch the video and make judgments for yourself. I had never heard of Seed Storm until Peter got this copy at Gen Con. It's a head-to-head -head card dueling game with some pretty cool mechanics, but Awakened Realms recently added the ability to play solo and co-op against an AI. So does Seed Storm distinguish itself from the sea of other dueling games? Let's find out and get to the list. <laughs> Number five is something I really enjoy, which is how you can customize the boss in the game to make a really different encounter each time. So first you have a boss in one of three different levels and they have different stats and a special ability. Then you take a basic and advanced deck and combine those, and those have very different mechanics from each of the decks that make them feel very unique. I talked about a very similar thing in my Marvel Champions review recently, and it was a huge pro there. So why is it a mix here? I put this as a mix because I'm not sure if Awaken Realms is going to come out with enough expansions and bosses for this game to make that mechanic really sing. Out of the core set, you have just one boss and two card decks, so there's no variability here. You're always playing the exact same thing. But yeah, if they never make any expansions, then this one is a total wash. Number four, though, is a full pro, and that's how they handle resources and paying for cards in the game. You draw two cards a turn, and to pay for any cards in your hand, you have to discard other cards. This is a mechanic I've loved in some dueling games in the past, especially Summoner Wars and Epic PvP. The idea that I might give up momentum now to save cards for a huge play later is really a fun resource management puzzle for me. Additionally here, your deck is your life, so there's even more to kind of consider as you wait and use cards and discard them. Following up a pro with a con, the balance in the game is not so great, and man, can it be swingy. The AI is going to have a random mix of cards each game, and sometimes they get these cards that just can't be played, and sometimes they get their very nastiest cards. That can make a huge difference in how the game goes. Also, as you can see from the end of my playthrough, which didn't go so well for me, there's a huge potential here for burst damage. I've had several games where I went from a lot of life to completely dead just because of a few card draws. Now, to be fair, especially playing this game solo takes maybe 15 or 20 minutes, so it's not like a huge time investment if that happens, but it is something to be concerned about. We're ping-ponging around, but we're back to a pro, and that's how the cards can be used in many ways in the game. This is honestly probably the most innovative and coolest thing the game has to offer. So every card in your hand is a unit, but every card in your hand is also an action you can play. So you don't have kind of that usual thing of like, here's an event or here's a person. But then beyond that interesting choice, if a unit makes it to the end of this war track and advances on the enemy, you can have them stay back as a resource generator, you can have them give a boost to all of your units, or you can have them attack and also apply their special ability, the same one you could have played from your hand, but now you've waited to activate it. Those choices, that versatility of units, the fact that you got to look at them in so many different ways, is really the coolest thing about the game, the thing that I enjoy the most. Now since that was my favorite thing, and it was number two, I think you know that my number one is going to be a con. In this case, it's something related to balance, but very specifically, the end game of this can be incredibly unsatisfying. There are two ways to defeat the boss. One is to take away all of their life. The other one is to go through their deck basically twice, because when they can't play cards the first time, they get a chance to play them again. That's all fine, but the calculation of life versus deck is way, way off here. Even with decks completely focused on dealing damage and me trying to do as much to the boss as I could, I have never gotten the boss close to even more than half dead with life. But decking them and winning in that kind of less satisfying way can happen incredibly quickly. On normal mode, it's sometimes impossible to lose. You can do almost nothing and they'll just run themselves out. But even on hard, when you manage to win by decking, it just doesn't feel that good. It's kind of like, oh man, they're crushing me, but then, oh, they ran out of steam, that's it. Overall, I think Seedstorm has some really cool mechanics. I love the multi-use, I love the paying for units, but it does not feel that tested or polished. It feels a little bit rushed out. I would recommend it for dueling play because there the mechanics work really well, but for solo and co-op play, I think it's not that great. Good gaming, everyone, and I'll see you at the next stop.